I'm getting back to refinishing the cabinet now. I'm going to try a couple old school techniques. One issue I need to tackle are these light spots on top of the cabinet. After stripping it, I lightly sanded it and it really didn't help any. So what I'm going to try doing is bleaching this with just straight up plain old household laundry bleach, no other additives. The idea being that I want to get this all to be the lighter color and then I can use toner lacquer to get it all to be a uniform nice brownish mahogany color. The other thing I want to try doing for grain filler is to use boiled linseed oil and pumice stone. Linseed oil has a property that, uh, in that it polymerizes as it dries. In other words, it gets hard. Uh, very similar to tongue oil, which I think would also work in this application. So the idea is rub a little oil on, sprinkle in some pumice, and make kind of a slurry and work it into filling in all these pores. Mahogany is especially porous. If you don't fill in these, all these open pores in the wood, you're going to have a really lousy looking finish. You want to get all those filled in and level and then put your finish on. Now I do have some commercial grain filler, but it's tinted. The hot mahogany grain filler I've got is nearly black, and the walnut I have is fairly dark brown. This is supposed to have a fairly natural light finish to it. So if I use either one of those, it's going to make it much darker. So I read this up, uh, read up on this online after I got a suggestion from one of my YouTube viewers. And uh, yeah, this, this seemed to have some fairly positive comments in some woodworking forums, so I'll give it a try. I've got 2F and 4F. The 2F is more coarse, but even so, it's a very fine powder, so this will probably work out alright. Otherwise, I'll maybe start out with this and then use the 4F to finish it off. I've never tried this before. I'm not sure how long it takes to dry, so do a little experimenting first and see how it goes. As for the bleach, uh, I have used this before on my 3862 cabinet to get some stains out of it, like some water and mildew stains. Uh, I'll put it on straight, just with a sponge, just in these two areas, and uh, continue as needed, and assuming it works, well actually whether it works or not, um, after I'm done with it I need, I'll neutralize it with some white vinegar. I just noticed on the side of the can they do actually indicate the drying time and it's 12 to 18 hours depending on conditions so I'm going to have to let this sit overnight. The bleach did a great job on the top of this cabinet and it didn't take very long at all. Two applications over the course of maybe 20 or 30 minutes, then neutralized it with white vinegar, then washed it out with clean water. Now I'm waiting for it to completely dry out, and then I will apply the linseed oil and pumice like I've done on the rest of the cabinet. Now it filled in the grain quite well, but it's a little bit darker than I was expecting. I'm hoping that it'll lighten up as it dries. It's only been a few hours and it's going to take, what did I say, 12 to 18 hours I think for it to cure. So we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. I finished cleaning up the underside of the chassis and reconnected all the trimmer caps and tightened them down along the back here. And I also replaced the speaker wire and have it wired in now. And I've powered the radio back up. So here's what my cobbled together tone control sounds like. Just two positions. Yeah, it's working fairly well. Um, I had a bit of buzzing before, and I ended up putting, temporarily at least, a line filter cap right across the AC line. The original design called for one going from one side to ground, while well, I added one in addition across here. And I've also got the chassis hooked up to uh, the third prong of an outlet for a ground. Which doesn't make a huge difference. For your free 30 day trial. In a six-month study, one of the largest of its kind. Participants lost an average... So, uh, it's working fairly well. 
I uh, also did a little bit of an alignment kind of by ear. I just uh, tweaked the four I, uh, IF trimmers while listening to it and just uh, peaked them for loudness and they were all pretty much on as it was anyways. Well, late last night I was able to get some stuff on shortwave. It's about 7.30 at night now, so might not quite be late enough, let's see. I was able to get, for example, the uh, time reference station, which is probably at 2.5 megahertz. Oh, some stuff. So clearly both bands are working, which is great. That's well, kind of funky sounding. <laughs> Here's all I used for a lining. It's just a quarter inch nut driver with electrical tape wrapped around the end. Put it through one of the holes on the back side. Locks around the trimmer cap nut there. And adjust it. So as you can hear, we have less gain now. Back off. I just did this to see if things are really off or not. I'll do this more accurately with an RF generator a little bit later. So, so a trimmer down here, which I think is for the antenna. And then there are a couple on the capacitor itself for the antenna and for the oscillator. I'll dig up the alignment instructions to go through this properly. But something else I want to take a look at. The volume control on this is a bit fidgety. When it's all the way down, I still get sound. And the volume increases rapidly. And then there's very little change for the rest of the travel. Take up a stronger station to make that a little more obvious. So it's all the way down now. Still hear the radio. Just tweak it a little. Volume jumps up. Are a problem, and I know there are many people that don't want people like myself to say it. And then for the last half or so of the travel, it'll, it increases, but not a whole lot. So I figured this is a replacement, so it looks a bit odd. And then I checked the value of it and found uh, about two and a half meg across it. Now, the original calls for 350k or 0.35 meg. So that's quite a bit different, almost ten times what they call for. Also notice one of the lugs isn't going to anything and it's supposed to be grounded. However, when I check continuity between that lug and chassis, I do get about zero ohms. So there might be something I can't see, like some kind of washer or something for mounting that's actually attached to that lead. I don't know. I figure both of those could potentially be problems because when this is all the way one extreme that wiper should be at ground and we shouldn't hear anything. And with a much larger value being in there I figure that's got to be uh, affecting this part of the circuit somewhat. 
After all, it shows that value for a reason. So I will hunt around and see if I have something closer to 350k, for example. Well, I was going to say this, which is the one I just salvaged out of that chassis I got out of storage. But this has written on it 1 meg, which is better. It's, it's certainly closer than that, but still a bit higher than I'd like. I dug up a universal CTS replacement pot that measured about 275k. I say universal because it has a type of shaft that can easily be adapted to just about anything. Be it half moon, knurled, etc. And it fits pretty well with this old Filco knob. And of course I can cut the shaft down to length and it's got an AC switch. It was new old stock, has a pretty good feel to it. So, as far as the volume goes, when it's all the way counterclockwise, I still get sound. But I think I have an idea now why that might be. While I was removing the old control and wiring this in, it occurred to me that having these two leads twisted together is very likely coupling a signal. This is a very high impedance input on the grid of the output tube. So even though the center tap is grounded, um, this is the uh, signal feeding into the pot and that could really be coupling through over to here. I can, I can test that pretty easily by shorting that out. It makes no difference if I completely short the center tap out. So there's clearly a signal feeding through somewhere besides this pot, so hopefully I can track, track that down. Because it is kind of nice when you turn the volume down to actually have it go to zero. Not crucial, but be nice. Now as far as how does it work, definitely have a better range of control now. So I think I'm going to stick with this control.